1492, up to date or very near it. An 1892 opera extravaganza in three acts and nine scenes. Words by R.A. Barnett. Music by Karl Pfluger. Teresa Vaughn, 1863-1903, brought this interesting, funny hit show to Broadway in 1893. It was her first Broadway show. She played Infanta Joanna, the teenage princess daughter of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain. Teresa becomes the girlfriend of young Christopher Columbus. The show has a sci-fi aspect in that it takes you back and forth between years. 1492 and 1893. In the show's hit scene, Teresa portrayed her favorite character Fräulein the Waif. The Waif was a poor German street singer dressed in artfully tattered clothing. This scene was not in the original show but was added into Act 2, Scene 2, after Teresa suggested it. Act I. Opening chorus and solo, Treasurer. Give us cash and I'm the Royal Chancellor. During chorus business rushing back and forth, shaking fists in Treasurer's face. Quinta. Now see here, if you have grievances, take the to the throne, do you understand? The royal personages owe you money, go to the royal personages, goodness gracious. I am not a member of the firm. Chorus. Any? Quinty. Any, did you all think I was? Chorus. Yes. Quinta. No, I only sign checks. Don Ferdinand. Very well. We'll go to their royal majesties. Exit chorus singing give us cash etc. Quinta. Shut up, great Scott. Do you want to wake me up? Give us cash, give us cash. The bank is closed, and in the royal box there are just 14 Maravedis and 2 of NG. I am expected to finance the entire armies. It's lucky they stand. If they want chairs, we'd bust. Harold. His Excellency, Christopher Columbus. Quinta. Is that Flay's face here again? Show him in, I suppose we'll have to see him. Music for Columbus's entrance. Columbus. Good morning, Signor Quintanilla. Quinty. Good afternoon. Columbus. Have their majesties decided to give me aid? Quinty. Yes, a promenade. Columbus. What, denied again? Quinty. Now look here. For the past seven years you have haunted this court four times a day, threatening to discover something if you could get a boat. You might as well understand first as last that Ferdinand and Isabella will not float your scheme. Columbus. Scheme. It is no scheme. That same ocean which seems lost to us in the western horizon, surely washes the rich shores of the rich Indies, and I tell you man. Quinty. Well, it don't wash here. Columbus. But senor me. Quinty. Don't you senor me round here, you wretched, representative of a banana vending, chestnut roasting, hand organic nation. If you want to discover something, go on off and discover if by your lonesome, and anyhow, remember the difference in our positions, I am a Hidalgo and you a Lodago, and there you are. Don't come around bothering me, and the other two of us that ain't come down yet. Bus, that's, local name, step. It's well protected. Have some sand? I'll go down to the beach and get some. Exit. Columbus. If they could only realize the importance of this great discovery they would not treat me so unkindly. You stupid fools to allow me to wander from you. But whither shall I go? Who will listen to me my courage fails me. Music for the entrance of Joanna. Joanna. Ah, my Columbus, dreaming and discovering new worlds. He feels discouraged, but I will help him. Catalina, Johnny. Enter Catalina and Johnny from C downstairs, Johnny falls downstairs. Johnny. Daddy wouldn't buy me a bulldog. Oh Christopher Columbus, after falls picks himself up. There he is over there. Joanna. Columbus. Columbus. Yes, my dear child. Joanna. What is the matter, Columbus? Columbus. I am weary and sick at heart, and I fear I shall never discover anything. Joanna. Don't say that, don't say that, you haven't discovered that you're. Josie loves you. Columbus. Ah, Joanna, you love me? Joanna. Although it is not Castilian etiquette and notwithstanding. 
I am a high Spanish beauty, don't think me devoid of maidenly modesty when I say I simply adore you. Columbus. Me, a poor wanderer, without friends and money. Why, I haven't a sovereign in the world, and even if I had, how long could we live? On a sovereign? Joanna. Quite a while, if you married a sovereign's daughter. How much do you want to buy this ship? Columbus. Sixteen thousand florins. Johnny. Give me my book. Catalina. He can't have it. Joanna. Oh, give him his book. Come here, Catalina, let's have some fun. You send Johnny to mother's room and get him to borrow the crown jewels and I will lend them to Columbus. Catalina. Borrow the crown jewels? Joanna. It will be such a joke on me, don't you know? Catalina. Don't think for a moment that your nickel-plated laugh deceives me. But I will help you, although I cannot see why you prefer this mariner to an aragenic hidalgo or a Castilian grand. Joanna. To Johnny, do you want to do something for your sister? Johnny. No, I don't want to do something for my sister. Joanna. Oh look Johnny, showing big stick candy, won't you do something for your sister? Johnny. Oh yes, I will do it now. What is it? Joanna. Well follow Catalina, and she will tell you what to do. Business Catalina stealing candy. Johnny. Give me my candy. Exit with Catalina. Joanna. Now Columbus, if I got that money for you, you won't flirt with any other girls when far away? Columbus. Believe me Joanna, ever faithful. Joanna. I will believe you. Dut K, Joanna and Columbus, then exit. Entering, of all and words that E.E.R. war writ, the saddest are those, you will please remit. These unpaid bills make me feel unsettled. Seated at table L, I will file them away. Entrance of Pfurgit de Murphy, music. Quinty. Now I wonder who opened that door. Goodness, who is it? You, Bridget? Good morning, excuse me if I kept you waiting. I trust you are quite well this morning. My goodness. You are looking charming. Where do you buy your shirt waists? Bridget. Has the missus been down yet, this morning? Up G. Quinty. N.A., she has not been down yet. I expect her down in a minute. X to R, but excuse me for keeping you standing. I will bring you down a chair. Offering her throne chair. Bridget. You needn't trouble yourself, I can stand, down stage C. Quinty. Oh you prefer standing? I trust everything is moving along all right in the kitchen. Bridget. Now see here, I've come this morning to give warning. I can't remain another day in this house and retain my self-respect. My back is broke with the 47 shirts that old man puts in the ash every week, why man, they give me only six nights cut in the week. Quinty. You want more? Bridget. Yes, two nights more and the use of the penny for my tea. What's more, my constitution is entirely undermined, trying to get my wages last Tuesday. Quinty. It's sixteen and a half weeks, I think. Bridget. Seventeen. Quinty. All right, let it go at that. Bridget. Goodness gracious. Working me fingers to the bone, there's nothing left anyhow but a skellington. Quinty. What have you done with all the money? I owe you, goodness you will get your money. Will you take it in golden plas trace, or eight drafts on Aaron go bra? Business Bridget Rushy at Quinty, who jumps into throne chair. Bridget. I will take it in money. Quinty. Oh you want it in money. All right, I will send it to you as soon as the bank opens. Bridget. On steps of throne, when the bank opens, eh? Now see here. If that money is not in my fist by twelve this morning, ne'er a bite will yes have in the house today. So put that in your smoke and pipe it. Bad says to you. I'll have me money and don't forget it. Quinty. Standing on throne chair, see here, this is no place to make Irish stew. Quinty slides off throne chair to steps, up quick again and sits on chair, same position with his fingers crossed. Bridget. See here now. What do you mean by standing there refusing to give me my wages? 
Do you think you can stand and call me darling and tell me what a beautiful face I have which I know without any of your soft soap, that you can keep on giving me taffy instead of my money well if you have that idea, you are mistaken for I am not that kind of a female and I don't forget it. I believe in women's rights, I do, and will have my rights and my lefts too. Where you goes, I goes, not because I loves you, oh no but because I hates you. Don't tempt me don't tempt me to lay a violent hand on you for in my temper I might forget I was a lady, but I'll have my money, oh you little insignificant, bow-legged, knock-kneed, pigeon-toed, sneak, I am just wanting my time standing here listening to you. Starts to go, turns suddenly, Quinty who has partly left the throne chair, jumps back again and climbs up on throne chair as far as possible, holds position until Bridget is off stage, what's that? Oh it's lucky for you that I am tongue-tied. Exit Bridget CD to R. Quinty. Off throne X to L, and the female who occupies yonder goes the queen, looking off R, there goes the queen. Laughter outside, what's that? Just as just the slightest spewpone of jag. He's been out all night, my goodness gracious, he is a sight, and that horrible Barcelona gang with him again. He's been having quite a little game, I suppose and will want money, but he won't get it. Laughter. King Song and Chorus. Chorus. Around King, after Song, here we are, again, home again, home again. King. Here slash tut tutti, stand still, you make me nervous. Pedro, R.1. Mr. Chairman, I move that we go to our respectable, I should say, respectable homes. King. Excuse me, you may go home, but not here, but before you go, boys. Won't you take something? Chorus. Why yes, our money. King. Money? Certainly, I am absent-minded about money matters, anyhow. Wonder where my royal treasurer is. Ah, there he is. Dreaming of my interests, he's got the principal, Quinty. Quinty. Not quality. Oh, who is it, did you call? Rises. King. No Quinty. That was East Granada, and tomorrow night is Granada Junction. Quinty. Does the Queen know you are out? King. I think so but how much? Such an elegant time we had. I never enjoyed myself so much in all my life. Has Isabel been down this morning? Quinty. No, she's not down, what's up? King. Isabella she's now down. Laughing at his own joke, that's good. I nearly lost my voice saying that's good last night, Quinty, but well it wasn't my evening, Alonzo, give the good Captain Pinson and his friends 15,000 glittering Castilians. Chorus. Hurrah. Quinty. Upsy and Bose, hold on your majesty, that is impossible, the exchequer us empty. Chorus. What? Quinty, L. I hope my articulation is good I said, the exchequer is empty. King. See. See here. Business strikes table, Alonzo, you haven't been monkeying with the deck, have you? Anyhow, come round later, say fifty years from now, and I'll tell you when to call again. Chorus with loud protestations. Chorus. We want our money. Rush at king. King. At throne, stand aside, and let yourselves pass. Take where, take care, you can't rush me, I'm no growler. I have allowed you the pleasure of my company for the past evening, taking in a bar I should say taking down a bar of the social fence that separates us, permitting you to become a part of an Ibsenic, howling scene of domestic royal realism. But don't tempt me, or I'll come out in an artificial dramatic style and consign you all to a dungeon. Now go, chase yourselves. Pinzon and Pedro. We go, but of our own accordion slash, at CD and break bus. King. I don't care on whose accordion you go. Exit conspirators and chorus grumbling. King. Ferdinand is himself again, I had almost commenced to think I was somebody else, that was an ease Spanish flush to go up against a king full. I'll teach those bark Elon's sausages not to monkey with their king. I have been bluffing all night, but that's the first one that went. Now to get down to intellectual level of the keeper of the golden plas trace. Alonso. What is the meaning of life? 10. Quinty. Yes, the interest is overdue and he has written for it. 
King. Do you mean to say that little shrimp had the nerve to done us? Quinty. Yes, he done it, I mean he did it. King. Then I suppose our kingdom can be wrenched from us at any minute by that little monkey? Quinty. Yes, by that little monkey wrench. King. Does the queen know anything? Quinty. Your Majesty, she knows it all. King. Quinty, that's been my private opinion of Isabel for years. Quinty. But see here, your jags. Quinty. Your Majesty s there are also likely to be several wrenches on this furniture. Last winter the queen told me to refit the palace, without regard to expense. To do this I was obliged to patronize the Barcelona Young People's House Furnishing Co. Limited and secure the goods on the installment plan dash 4 ducats down and 917 ducats a week until paid for, I gave them 9 ducat and last year's ice cream freezer. King. I hope it freezes them out, but what can they do? Quinty. They can yank this stuff away. King. Oh those yanks. Enter furniture men. 11. Nick. Ladies, allow me to introduce His Excellency, Christopher Columbus. Quinty. Yes, he is the originator of personally conducted tours. Girls. Charming, oh isn't he lovely. Quinty. Yes, isn't he charming and I am with him you know? Nick. And now, Your Excellency, shall we start dinner? Girls. Oh dinner. Nick. Where shall we dine? Quinty. Dalmonikis. Exit girls who was that last one? Nick. Are you coming Alonzo? Quinty. No, I shan't go now, I'll stop here and read last Sunday's paper. Let me see, where did I leave off? Oh yes, how to get thin. Enter Bunko. Bunko. Well Lonnie, how do ya do? Quinty. My dear sir, you have the advantage of me. Bunko. Not ATL all not at all. Aside. Never seen him in my life before. Aloud, I am the president of the Supreme Consolidated Rainmaking Company of East Hoboken. Have a shower with me? Quinty. I didn't hear what you said. Bunko. I said have a shower with me. 12. Rainstorm. Dramatic music. Policeman runs across stage with umbrella, other persons rush across stage. Bunko. After rain is over. My company can furnish three of them showers for five dollars and make money. I am looking for a treasurer for the company. Do you want a job? Quinty. I am a treasurer now, in Spain. Bunko. I won't take no for an answer. Your salary will be ten thousand dollars a year. Quinty. Oh, but I. Bunko. Oh if that ain't enough we'll make it twenty thousand a year. We can pay it just as easy. Quinty. But I have been. Bunko. Now see here when I say a thing it goes, but we'll call it 30,000. Quinty. 30,000. Bunko. Of course, this is a position of responsibility, I must have some security. Quinty. How much do you want? Bunko. How much have you got? Quinty. Excuse me a minute I want tea talk to myself. How much do I look as if I had? Oh yes. Let me seem dollar four comma zero zero. I just changed a ten dollar bill. King. LC, thrown. Thrown out. Queen. To Quinty, do you know anything about this? Quinty. L, no ma'am. Someone swiped it, I think. The Barcelona Young People's House Furnishing Co. have taken all the furniture for the debts we owe them. Queen. Insolent. Quinty. Yes, isn't it terrible? There is also a water pipe burst in the house. Queen. Anything more? Quinty. X to Queen, no ma'am, oh it nearly broke my heart to do it, but I've done it ordered a plumber. Queen. A plumber. King. Everything is in hock and a plumber in the house. Oh Isabel, what is the use of striving against the inevitable? Let's give up and get out of business. Queen. What, abdicate, and you call yourself a man? King. X to Queen, I'm a Spanish damn fango. Queen. Eh. King. I mean fandango. Queen. I will show you what a Janice Miller, dress reform woman can do. Business throws train of dress around, 
Quinty yells to King who is standing half asleep, he jumps up just in time to miss the train which passes under his feet. Quinty. Yelling to King, look for the train. King. Yes, but all the creditors are demanding money. Queen. Let them demand. I can take care of them. King. But how about the King of France? Queen. The King of France is in France I am here, go see. Johnny. Hurrah for Nama. Bridget. Hurrah for Nama. King. What's the matter with Papa? Quinty. He's all right. Enter Harold from R to C. At C D. His Most Gracious Majesty, Charles VIII, King of France, exit. King. Quinty, I'm a gunner. Catalina. Papa, be a king. King. I'd rather be an ace. Quinty. That's not o ace why. Queen. Well, how much interests do we owe this little French wretch? Quinty. Ninety thousand ducate, net. Get up. Buzz. Diamonds on fingers. Queen. Bring me the crown jewels. Johnny. Laughing. Joanna. Oh Johnny, please don't. Quinty. What's the matter with baby McKee? Johnny. X to Queen C, laughing, oh mama, the jewels is gone. I swiped them and gave them to her. Pointing to Joanna, and X to R. Joanna. Oh, mother forgive me, I gave them to Columbus T by a ship. He has pawned the jewels. Up to Queen and kneeling. Quinty. There will be another jewel when she gets hold of the pawnbroker. Queen. Grasping Joanna's waist, unnatural child. What have you done? Joanna. Oh Johnny, I didn't think you would do that to me. Johnny. Oh well, I didn't know. Joanna. Didn't know? Queen. Send for Columbus at once, Ferdinand, don't stand up there grinning like a ballet girl, brace up, and prepare to receive Charles, entertain him with music, song, and dance. If worse comes to worse, Ferdinand, you might sing him one of your comic songs, it will not amuse him, but it might distract his mind, as you value your lives. Music Marcel Lays, Enter Charles VIII, R.C., Backslash. All laugh. Charles. L.C., Salutation. King. Ta ra ra boom da i, Charlie, I'm glad to see you, Charlie, Charlie, do you know my wife, did I introduce you to my wife? Charlie. My wife? King. No, not my wife, I mean my wife, Bella, Isabel, allow me to introduce Charles of France, one of us. Queen. How do you do, Charles, exit Queen. Quinty. Goodness bells off her trolley today. King. Charlie, on this side, my little family. Family. How do you do? Johnny. Charlie, get your hair cut. King. Charlie, my royal treasurer, oh you can't touch him for a cent, but Charlie, you must be worn out, weary, fatigued, from your long journey, sit down, and we'll open something. We'll open something Quinty, open the window. Quinty. Johnny, where's the window? Open the window. King. Charlie, do you want some money? Don't speak, make signs, anything but on your natural don't speak. Do you like dancing? We'll give him plenty of dancing. On with the dance. Solo dance and ballet. Quinty. After dance, Charlie, are you having a nice time? You'll have a nicer time getting your money. Here's your hat. Eleven. Flourish of trumpets. Quinty. Seventeen. Notes page. If you accomplish all you claim you can, your reward will be many thousand. Pius Trace, and the hand of our favorite laughter in manage. Joanna. Obey you higgist. Go Columbus be brave and hasten your return, for I will await you with anxiety, and while one the wide ocean remember there is always someone thinking of you goodbye. Quinty. Ah, here's the queen. To Dididum. Enter Queen Rue. Harold. Enter L to CX to R, Christopher Columbus, Your Majesty. Enter Columbus, L kneels to Queen. Quinty. He here again, I thought he had fallen overboard. King. Goes L, hello Columbus, how did you get out of Ohio? Queen. Rise Columbus, 
is your ship ready? Columbus. Rise, yes, your majesty. Queen. The entire court and the king of France go with you. You may have your thought, Columbus, that we do not like you, but we do, and we have created your Lord High Admiral of all per fleet, and thus empower you. Gives parchment or scroll with red seal, etc., to press into service such ships as you may require for this excursion. King. And Chris. Give big casino first chance that long gentleman over there. Pointing to tall conspirator. Queen. Then you set sail, Columbus, let no ship turn back, do this and my crown jewels, my crown jewels, are yours. Columbus. How can I ever thank your gracious majesty, at last the fond dream of my life is about to be realized. Queen. Do not thank us, Columbus, but go at once, before we change our minds. Columbus. I hasten to obey your majesty. Starts to exit. Quinty. Everything goes even the day goes. Day goes. Columbus. Johanna adios. Exit. Queen. My friends we entertain our honored guest. See to Charles, with a trip down the harbor, and we invite, and command everybody, especially our creditors to go, myself and family will on the next boat. Quinty. Goodness, what a floating indebtedness. Queen. Alonzo. Quinty. Excuse me Charlie, stop talking to yourself, did you call, your highness Ness Ness? Queen. Yes, you will go to. Quinty. Ah, must I leave home and mother? Queen. When you get into deep water, just drop Charlie overboard, you understand. Quinty. I understand liquidate the debt. Here's your hat, Charlie. Finale. Joanna. After Queen's cadences, oh man. That's dreadful. Johnny. You can just bet your sweet life my mama can gargle. Queen. Be good you naughty child. Quinty. Charlie, here's your hat. Continuation of finale. End of Act 1.